Budget X570 motherboards have kind of been in a weird place since they've launched, with stuff like the Gigabyte Gaming X board I reviewed recently just slightly missing the mark. This is the MSI X570 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, and I think it hits the sweet spot. It currently costs just shy of £200, which would normally put it in the premium motherboard category, but in this funky PCIe Gen 4 world we live in, apparently this is budget, which is apparently magic, but it actually does have most of the features you would expect from a premium motherboard, which is great to see. It's got Wi-Fi built in, along with a load of USB ports and a good audio codec, in the Realsec ALC1220. It's also got a black PCB and a funky cutout next to your six SATA ports, as well as a load of RGB connectors, should you need them. VRM-wise, I don't expect it to have any problems supporting basically any Ryzen CPU, 3950X or not. It's a doubled 4 plus 2 phase design, which while not the optimum solution, is certainly good enough. I was testing with the Ryzen 3700X, which draws about 80 watts under full load, and my VRMs here were sitting around about 60 degrees Celsius at their peak, which means you have plenty of thermal headroom for a 3950X or a chip that can overclock if you magically win the sil silicon lottery. Speaking of thermal headroom, the massive fan on the chipset actually barely turned on, and when it did, it was so quiet that it was actually quieter than the GPU fans, and therefore I didn't know it was on until I physically looked. It's also got a heatsink on the top side, which actually doubles as the M.2 heatsink, although the heatsink itself is pretty flat, which means it's more of a heat soak than a heat sink, but still nice enough to see. BIOS-wise, I still have to commend MSI on their great design. With their very easy to use layout of stuff like a big red button for XMP, a uh, boot priority list that you can just drag around, and in the advanced menus, the overclocking page is just a st single page with every setting you could ever want on it, and that makes it really easy to do a basic overclock or dive deeper. Speaking of XMP, I'm also happy to report that the board had zero problems running the 3600MHz RAM I was testing with, and it should even support up to 4400MHz if you so wish. PCIe-wise, of course you have Gen 4 support on here. The top M.2 slot goes direct to the CPU as always, with the bottom one being routed through the chipset. You also have two X16 size slots, although the bottom one is actually X8 electrically, and if you're using that bottom one, will also disable eight lanes in the top slot so that it's X8, X8 instead of X16 and zero. You also have three PCIe X1 connections, which all go through the chipset as well. Strangely, the only feature that's really missing here is the USB-C front panel header, which is sad to see missing, but in place of that, I guess you do have both two USB 3.0 front panel headers, and four fat four pin fan connectors down the bottom all in a nice row for you to easily connect it. Overall then, this is a pretty great board. You've got a strong set of VRMs that can handle pretty much any CPU throughout them, a quiet chipset fan, and a nice set of features including built-in Wi-Fi as well. And so, you know, to ask the usual question, would I put this in my rig? Actually, I think I would. It's a very nice board, especially at the price point it's at. It provides a nice set of features along with a good amount of compatibility with obviously whatever chip you fancy and should even have a good upgrade path for Ryzen 4000 as well, assuming BIOS updates come through, which so far they have been doing pretty well. With that said, those are my thoughts. I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of this board? What do you think of MSI's X570 lineup in general and the, the general X570 lineup from the different companies, including budget boards, because they seem to be, like I said at the start, in a bit of a weird place. Of course, if you want to see more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, take a look at that subscribe button with a bell notification icon. If you want to check out the board and check out pricing when and where you watch this, because it can vary, do take a look at the link in the description down below. That will take you to your local Amazon store where you can see all of that. If you want to support the channel, there are a load of other links in the description down below too. There's Amazon and Overclock GK affiliate links, which don't cost you anything to use, but massively help me out when you do use them. Or there's also merch for hoodies or t-shirts like this one, or a load of other designs, and Patreon if you want to get cool rewards and support me directly too. There's also stuff, stuff like private internet access, which is a great and cheap VPN, or Humble Bundle for cheap games support charities too. And if you want to keep watching and see more videos like this one, including stuff like the Gigabyte X570 Gaming X review, then do check out the videos over in the cards at the end. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below, and we'll see you all in the next video.